Have you ever wondered where the television signal you are watching is coming from? My name is Marshall Dodge. Though I am a native and resident of the city of New York, the state of Maine is closer to my heart. It was 15 years ago that I started delving into Maine humor. Since that time, I have worked to put out six records of Down East stories and have performed them from Maine to Texas. I'm going to tell you some Maine stories. Some of them have been told to me. Some I have come upon in books, and some I have made up myself. All of the stories reflect the spirit of old Maine, and all are stories, not jokes. They end gently with a poke rather than a punch, and most have a message that lives on through many tellings. Bert and I come down to the dock about six o'clock in the early morning. Bert went into the boathouse to fetch the pots and the slickers, and I went down on the dock to start up the bluebird. It was pretty cold as I stepped into the cockpit to loosen her up with a few turns. Oh, that confounded bulldog engine. You know, the old bulldogs are making break, and uh, it's kind of hard to start it. So I gave it a few minutes to rest a bit. Seems to start better when you rest it. I advanced the spark, gave it a bit more choke, and a wee bit more throttle, and started in again in earnest. So, 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 bum, 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 well, sir, I got it started. Bert come down on the dock with the pots and the slickers. Throw him aboard, Bert! He threw him aboard. He cast off the bow, Bert. He cast off the bow, he cast off the stern, loosed the springer, hopped aboard, gave the dock a shove with the boat hook, and the bluebird slithered out into harbor. Well, sir, we hit none number two about on schedule. When we could feel a cold breeze coming in off the ocean, laden with hum today. That was a breeze. <laughs> and as you could tell, laden with hum today. <laughs> hoo -ha, hoo -ha. That were old Greasy Frog Light, three miles to starboard, giving off its signal twice every 30 seconds. And along the horizon, we could see a dark, ominous looking cloud, twere a fog bank. And it weren't but five minutes before we were in a dungeon of the stuff so thick you couldn't stir it with a spoon. I told Bert to cut engine so that we could listen for the Bangor packet about due through at that time. Cut engine, Bert. <laughs> Bert, cut engine. <laughs> God for mighty, that was the Bangor packet about a half mile to starboard. Give a blast to the horn, Bert. Lap! <laughs> that was the Bangor packet, a quarter mile to starboard, and bearing down at a good 10 knot clip straight for the bluebird. Give another blast to the horn, Bert. Lap! That were a good one, but it weren't good enough. For out of the fog, about an eighth of a mile to starboard, come the Bangor packet, coming along at a good ten knot clip. <laughs> the 
the packet, smuck the bluebird about midships, and drove on through her like green corn goes through the new maid. The water come up to our necks before we decided to swim for it. I dove down about a fathom or so, so as to avoid the two whirring propellers of the packet as she went on top. I come up to the side and cried out, Bert, are you there? Well, there was no answer, so I thrashed about in the water till I struck upon a hard object about a foot or so beneath the surface. I reached down, grabbed hold, pulled it up, and it were Bert. Only he were half drowned. So I held on to him until, by some stroke of luck, the tide carried us alongside a bellboy. I clumb atop it, pulled up Bert beside me, emptied him out, and we were near dry as two wishbones. By the time a fishing smack, spiders come up alongside and brung us back into Kennebunk Port, Maine. Now I wish to extend an invitation to all you fine people gathered here this evening, so that if you're ever down along the coast around Kennebunk Port, and if you want to go fishing, swimming, or just plain sightseeing, you can always do any one or all three of them things aboard the Bluebird 2 with Bert and I. <laughs>